Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to our channel. I'm Oakley, and in today's video, I'm doing a kind of like a read aloud book, and it'll be a um, chapter or series practically. And right now, I'm going to be reading three book or three three chapters of this book. Um, the book is called Gabriella. And it is Girl of the Year 2017, and it was a American Girl doll. And yes, I created in my closet a library. I got books in there and books above me, so I got books everywhere. But let's get started, but let me read the back first. It says, Gabby loves expressing herself, especially in the dance studio. But lately, poetry is becoming her art form of choice. And for good reason. Sorry, my phone just turned. And for good reasons. Gabby struggles with stuttering. And spoken word poetry helps her speech flow more freely. Still compared to how confident she feels on the dance floor, speaking up can be scary. When the city threatens to close her beloved community art center, Gabby is determined to find a way to help. Can she harness the power of her words and rally her community to save Liberty Arts? So, that is what the back says. And it's a American Girl doll, and it was a dollar at our book fair. So, better deal than that. Chapter one. Toe heel, toe heel, toe heel, stomp. Toe heel, toe heel, toe heel, stomp. Each move bursts into my head like a shout. All around the air. The air all around me, the air was filled with sounds of tap shoes, scrap, scraping and stomping. Mama calling out the next step as she snapped in time. So I'm guessing her mom is like the coach. Or I don't know if that's what you call a dance people coach. That's what we call our gymnast um, coach. Anyways, Mama calling out the next, step as she, the next step as she snapped into the rhythm of the music. Above me, the sun poured through Liberty stained glass windows leaving little pools of colored light on the floor at my feet. Riff heel ball chain, riff heel stomp, riff heel ball chain, riff heel turn. I stood on my right leg and whirled around, careful to find my spot so I could so I wouldn't get dizzy. My spot was always the same in dance studio number seven. A hollowed out square cut into the wall. Right between the two big mirrors. Page one is done. They have it bookmarked. You only have to read like... Bookmark. 24 pages. So it's not going to be bad. Don't worry. Okay. A phone neeked. Mom, Mama called it. From the time when phones were so big... People had to literally carve out space for them. Toe heel, toe heel, toe heel, chug. Toe heel, scuff heel, tip heel, slam. My feet flew over the dance studio's worn wooden floors from one puddle of light to another. And as soon as my heart was pounding out of, out of a rhythm in time with the beat, like the music, and I had become one. I couldn't help it. I closed my eyes. I knew what Mama would say if she caught me. Gabriella McBride, you know how unsafe that is. You can lose your place that way. I didn't know that. I did know that. But I knew Liberty better. N knew every spot on its dance floor, scuffed white from years of dancers, like me, stomping, turning, and tapping. And I knew that when I opened my eyes, a few beats from them. 
I'd see that the Liberty's painted over brick walls, exposed heating pipes, and its tin tiled ceiling. And I'd have no trouble finding my place. And finish, Mama said as she turned the volume down on the old sound system we used during tap re rehearsals. The music faded and then disappeared. I opened my eyes. The music faded and then, or I just read that line again, I'm sorry. Just as Mama began to clap. If I didn't know any better, said Mama, I would think I was in the presence of Savannah Glover's dancers. This is not a sponsored thingy. This page now. Okay. Mama beamed at each, each member of the Liberty Junior Dance Company in turn, which her eyes met mine. She winked. I winked back. Mama, or Miss Tina, as the other students called her, was the founder and executive director of Liberty, also known as Liberty Arts Center, a community center. She'd started 17 years ago. Not only was Mama a big kahuna, kahuna, that's what Daddy called her. She was also the director of dance programs, which suited her just fine. Mama, with her strong power for legs and fluid movements, always said dancing came naturally to her, like breathing. And then she'd say, it's like that for you too, Gabby. It was true. Dancing came to me as easy, as easily as calling came to my best friend, Tegan. Or the way words came to my cousin, Red. Or the other words seemed to come to almost everyone else except me. I glanced up at the clock as Mama instructed us to take a seat on the floor. My heart was still racing as, and as the clock crept closer to six. My pulse sped up. I had somewhere important to be. Excellent work today, ladies. You're almost ready for our rhythm and views show next month. 5.55. I stared at Mama, willing her eyes to meet mine. When at last she looked over at me, I looked at the clock and back at her. She nodded. She hadn't forgotten. She'd give me permission to skip ballet rehearsals and go to the poetry group meeting instead. I half listened as Mama rattled off dates, Expecta expectations and information about costumes. Remember how much rhythm and views mean means to Liberty and the, and the Witter community. Mama said, 16 years, this show has gone on, and people always come up to me and say, I finished Mama's sentence in my head They look that they look forward to this day all year. The Liberty community loved the shows because we got to celebrate all the hard work we'd done in the last year. Art students go to exhibit their work in the lobby, and guests could even purchase the artwork, just like at a real art gallery. The dance, comp the dance companies performed. The piece we'd be perfect perfecting all year. I don't know how to pronounce this. And Impanada. And Impanada. I think that's right. Take out joints from across the street, catered the snack bar, and everyone's friends and family came out for the show. It was like a block party, cookout and concert all rolled into one. And it was my favorite day, too. Mama finished her speech, then clapped loudly again. Her way of signaling that it was time to go. I jumped to my feet, ran over to where I'd left my bag and tore off my tap shoes in four seconds flat. I was bolting toward the door in my sneakers, pushing just long enough to wave to Mama. She smiled and shook her head. I guess she was as su surprised as I, I still sometimes was that. I was in a hurry to get to a place where I'd be, where I would have to stand up and talk in front of other people. See, talking wasn't like dancing for me. When I danced tap, when I danced tap or hip hop, I could speak with my feet, my hands, 
my whole body if I wanted to. I can make one of m one move quiet as a whisper, the next loud as a shout. But sometimes when I opened my mouth, it was like words started to second guess themselves. Like they weren't sure if they wanted to come out. And when they finally did, I started shuddering like crazy. But not all the time. Like when I was racing to the dance studio where my poetry group meeting met. I ran straight into Amelia San Sanchez, my ballet instructor. Whoa, Gabby, slow down, she said, laughing. I spoke to your mom. You're going to make up for that for tonight's missed rehearsals, right? I definitely am, I said, without a single shudder. I kept on going, and when I ran into good old Stan, the friendliest janitor ever, he said, where are you hurrying off to, Gabby? And I replied, poetry club meeting. See you later, without missing a beat. Now we're on page six and seven. Miss Baxter, my speech therapist at school, told me that people who stutter don't do it as much in places they feel comfortable. That's why my speech was hardly ever bumpy when I was in our little white and blue house on Topkin Street with Mama and Daddy. Or at Liberty, because both places were home to me. Both pa places filled with family. <coughs> Sorry. Like Amelia, who I'd known since she was 19, and I was six. She taught me how to spot my turns by challenging me to a staring contest. Every time you, every time you turn, I want us to... I want us eye to eye. Even now, four years later, Amelia thought I was in spotting. She gently say, staring contest, Gabby, to remind me. So she must be 10 years old because it was four years ago and she was six back then. So she's 10, my age. Okay. Remind me. Stan was like family too. I known him my whole life. He'd been the janitor at Liberty ever since Mom opened it. Hold on there now, Stan called out to me, and I stopped in my tracks. Poetry's been moved to the auditorium, hadn't it? Shoot! How had I forgotten? I took off the other direction, calling, Thanks, Stan, over my shoulder. As I went, by the time I made it, or over my shoulder, as I went. By the time I made it to the auditorium, the whole group was already up on stage. For the second time, I stopped in my tracks. I danced on that very same stage plenty of times. But today was the very first time I'd have to speak on it. I gulped. Gabby, over here! Tegan called out to me with a frantic wave over her hand. Or of her hand. The poetry group had made a circle on stage in front of the heavy red curtain, and Tegan had saved me a seat right beside her. I've got everything ready to go, she whispered to me, reaching up to adjust her beanie over her strawberry blonde hair. There's two things Tegan was almost never with. I'm so sorry. Sorry, y'all.